What's going on guys? In today's video, we're going to be talking about 10 tips for new designers. And at the end, I'm actually going to throw in a little bonus tip if you want to stick around until that point. So I've been doing design work for about the last five or six years. Uh, I have a pretty decent amount of experience and there's some things that I really wish that I knew when I first started learning design that hopefully will help you guys along the way uh, as you become a I guess more experienced designer. As always, if you're interested in content like this, it would be awesome to have you around the channel if you want to subscribe. And if you wouldn't mind, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like below for the YouTube algorithm or maybe even a comment if you feel so inclined. Okay, so let's start off with the first tip that I really wish somebody had told me from the beginning. One thing that I've done in the last probably three to four years, I guess, of my uh, design experience has been making trend boards or mood boards or I guess whatever you want to call them. Basically what a trend board or a mood board is is a collection of images that can kind of inform your design that you're about to make. So basically what you do is you go on a design inspiration site, something like Dribbble or Pinterest, both are great platforms for finding design inspiration, and you take images from those sites of things that are kind of similar to each other, similar to the idea of the thing that you want to make, and you download all of those into a file, drag them into Illustrator, and that way you can see each one of those designs uh, kind of next to each other so that they can help inform your future design. You can uh, look at those designs and take elements from them and combine all those elements into your own design. A lot of times what people think when they first start designing stuff is that they really need to be 100% original. They need to uh, make everything from their own head and that's just really not the case. A lot of stuff in design has already been done to be honest and it's good to just take a little piece from here and over here and once you start combining all those different elements into your own design, it kind of creates your own flavor, but without you having to completely originally make everything, because it's not really necessary, and it's good to follow trends and things that are existing today. You don't need to be 100,000% original with everything. Originality can come from a combination of other people's designs, and twisting those and turning them into something that uh, kind of speaks to your own personal design aesthetic. Creating inspiration boards, mood boards, trend boards, whatever you want to call them, is hands down probably the biggest thing that I started doing that has helped me to grow as a designer. Just because you can see things that other professional designers are doing and apply them to your own work and really start to grow at a more rapid pace than you would have if you were just trying to come up with stuff from your own head. So the next tip that we'll talk about is working backwards. Working backwards is almost sort of similar to that first tip, where basically you deconstruct a bunch of people's different designs that they've created from those trend boards that you uh, just put together from your different design inspiration websites, and take elements from those designs that you like, and uh, just basically break them down. Why you like them, uh, why you think the designer put a button over here instead of over here, or made this icon whatever shape that they decided to make it. If you start working backwards and breaking down what you think the designer's intent was and then applying that to your designs, you can very quickly grow your own aesthetic and start to see other people's design aesthetic as well. So the next really big one that I think is important to bring up is kind of maximizing your time and maybe instead of watching Netflix, you watch some software tutorials. Definitely not the most entertaining sometimes, but if you want to be a designer, the field is extremely competitive and you really have to be at the top of your game to be successful. So really, I mean, it's not to say that you shouldn't ever enjoy yourself or anything like that, but maybe take, instead of watching three shows on Netflix at a night, take a half an hour of that and dedicate it to watching some Adobe Illustrator tutorials. Or if you're maybe more of a 3D product designer, you watch some Blender tutorials or some SolidWorks tutorials, but basically just try to learn something new about design every day. It doesn't take a lot of effort. If you just took a half an hour that you would have spent watching Netflix and watched some software tutorials or some other design tutorials, then you will very quickly start to see your skill sets growing and your understanding of design growing and your efficiency as a designer growing. You don't have to spend every single hour of the day grinding away on it, but maybe think about what you could have done in that time that you spent watching Netflix that you could have 
use to grow yourself and your skill set as a designer. The next tip I think is useful to talk about is designing in grayscale rather than designing in color right away. I actually found this tip kind of from a lot of photo students that I was friends with. A lot of them started shooting in black and white and started uh, editing their images in black and white before they started moving to color. The reason for this is that you can start seeing contrast in a very raw form in black and white. You can kind of see what's making a composition interesting in its rawest form. Just the simple light and dark tones of an image. Rather than focusing on a bunch of different colors, it's kind of helpful to get the fundamentals of black and white and understanding contrast ratios and how you can apply them to your design. So I would definitely recommend if you are a new designer and just starting to get into the field that you maybe just for maybe the first month or something like that, try to focus on black and white and creating successful designs in just a totally neutral color space like that. Maybe then you can move to monochrome or start mixing in like two color palettes, but I definitely would say that it would be helpful for you to understand contrast if you started with black and white, and that's one of the things that I wish I had started doing right from the beginning. Okay, on to number five, and this is another really big one that I wish I had spent more time on in my early career as a designer, and that is understanding line weight. Line weight and variation of line weight and how it affects the aesthetic of your design is so important in creating hierarchy and creating visually interesting work. Understanding line weight and how to vary it, where to vary it, and what the effects of that variance does to your design, uh, understanding that is so crucial. It might seem like a simple thing, but something where the line weight is properly varied is significantly more interesting than something where the line weight is just kind of the same throughout. Uh, varying line weight really can make your designs pop. Okay, on to number six, and this is kind of a personal pet peeve of mine, also kind of something that some professors instilled in me, and that is really try to avoid center-aligned text at all costs. To me, center-aligned text is kind of like amateur, I guess. You don't really see a lot of really nice designs using center-aligned text, and the reason for that is it's kind of like almost a cop-out. People who don't understand proper hierarchy and proper placement of text uh, within a document often resort to center lines. So that's why you see a lot of, uh, you know, mom and pop restaurants with their menus just totally center lines straight down. It looks really uniform, really bland, and really just not professional in general. Uh, I pretty much avoid center line text at all costs. There's very, very few situations where I think center line text is actually appropriate for designs. So the next tip is basically always be growing. Always be trying to expand your design vocabulary, your design ability, your software ability, what you can do as a designer. And maybe even beyond design, you know, maybe you expand your capabilities into another field of creativity, such as photo or video production. Basically, always be trying to diversify and grow your skill set. Like I said before, design is an insanely competitive industry, and you need to do everything you can to separate yourself from the rest of the crowd. And again, this is not to say that you need to spend every second of the day trying to focus on your design career and focus on your design ability. It's just like something to keep in the back of your head that it really is a competitive world out there, a dog-eat-dog -dog world. You need to set yourself apart in some way. And to do that, you really kind of always need to be having design in the back of your head instead of just looking at that terrible restaurant menu where this text is all center aligned and they're using all these terrible fonts, maybe pick apart why you don't like those designs. Just always be focusing on design. Always be trying to see the world from a designer's perspective and take those things that you see and try to apply them to your design. There's so much opportunity for growth in the world as a designer. Everything is designed. And if you start seeing the world like that, you start seeing different design flaws in the world, you'll always be growing personally as a designer, even if you're not watching software tutorials or something like that on the internet. If you want to be successful as a designer, it's important to always try to focus on growing your design ability. The next thing that I really wish somebody had told me earlier was that you should start your design portfolio now. The reason for that is not so that you can go ahead and send out your portfolio to a bunch of companies and ask for a job or try to get freelance clients. It's more so that you can start thinking about your work in the way that you present it, uh, the way that you present your design thinking ideas, 
the way that you talk about the intent behind your design, that's really, really important as a designer. And if you start doing it early on, even if the projects that you're talking about in your early portfolios aren't going to end up in your final portfolio or the portfolio that you're going to use to try to get jobs, it's important to start thinking about um, the intent behind design. Uh, and how you're going to present it to future employers early on. I really wish somebody had told me that in my early career as a designer because once I started building my portfolio, I feel like I was almost like a little bit lacking in the way that I presented my design work. So the next one I feel like is kind of obvious, but practice is really the biggest thing you can do to help yourself grow as a designer. Growing your creative eye and your creative ability is much like working any other muscle in your body. The more that you work out your creative mind and your design mind, the more that you're going to be able to successfully design products, graphics, whatever you might be making. It really can't be stressed enough that the best way to grow as a designer is to design. Like I said, it might seem obvious, but it really is the biggest thing that you can do for yourself as a designer is just practice. Okay, and then my last tip before I give away the bonus tip at the end is to network. Networking is most likely going to be the way that you get a job as a designer. People don't just walk up to you and offer you a design job. You have to put yourself out there and talk to people and get your name in with different companies and get your name out there in the design community, whether it's through something like Dribbble or a more professional site like LinkedIn. It's important to start establishing connections early on in your design career so that when you're ready to apply for an internship or when you're ready to start you know, booking freelance clients and you feel like your design work is up to par, you'll have already established a network of people that you can reach out to for design jobs. It's so important to start making friends in the design community early, and again, like I said, I really wish somebody had told me that earlier on in my design career. Okay, yeah, that's pretty much my top 10 tips that I would give to new designers. I think that uh, if I had been told these tips earlier, mm, my career probably would have went a lot more smoothly. So I really hope that some of these can actually help you guys out and help you grow as designers. And now for my last bonus tip, uh, that is to read design literature. Uh, I didn't really do this too much in my early design career because personally I'm not like a super big reader. And actually like a lot of designers that I've met also are not super big readers. Uh, most of them are more focused on the visual side of things. But I think it's really important to read and absorb design literature because of the wealth of information that are in those books. And you don't necessarily have to sit down and read a book. There's so much design content out on platforms like Audible. Some of my favorites are Change by Design by Tim Brown and The Design of Everyday Things by Nielsen. If you start listening to books in your free time or maybe when you're working out in the morning, uh, it'll just kind of get your head in that design space and is quickly going to open you up to a lot of new design ideas. Kind of going back to that Netflix side of things, if you are looking to uh, you know, watch something, watch some content, video content, uh, one of my favorite design film producers is Gary Hustvit. Hustvit. I'm not exactly sure how you say his last name. But he's done a number of design-related documentaries, um, my favorite so far being ROMs. I would highly recommend you watch that. If you're interested in any form of product or graphic design, ROMs is an insanely interesting person and he hasn't had a lot of interviews uh, actually video interviews so i think that that film roms by gary hustvit is so special and it would be a really great thing for any new designer to watch okay that pretty much wraps up this video uh, if you guys have any other design tips for new designers i'd love to hear them in the comments below and i'm sure that other people would love to see those as well uh, and if you enjoyed this video it would be awesome if you would leave a like for the youtube algorithm and if you're interested in more content like this, it would be awesome if you subscribe to the channel. All right. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Later.